Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We are not in career mode this time, we are in sandbox mode. Later on we will be in, uh, in career mode, but for now we are going to be in sandbox mode because I'm concerned about the heat shield on our pod. The reason I'm concerned about the heat shield on our pod is because I tried out CST100 recently and its heat shield exploded. So, I would like to verify that the heat shield is properly configured for the current version of Realism Overhaul before we test it in career because it's very expensive. The pod is very expensive and I don't want to take that risk. <laughs> That's just a configuration issue. It's not uh, our heat shield didn't work because of something correct. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's just... It's just uh, Aro changing numbers on us, and so I would like to make sure that our heat shield is okay. So we're going to try. We just got cheated into orbit quickly in sandbox. Bring it down and check. So that is the idea. I'm not going to launch it or anything. We're gonna, not going to test the launcher, and that doesn't matter anyway. Uh, we're just going to test the pot. And I'm just going to let it sit like that, and we're going to cheat it to orbit. Let's see. You can tell it's sandbox because the real antenna message keeps popping up and saying that real antenna has been disabled in comnet. That's <laughs> right. I mean, the, the comnet has been disabled in the difficulty setting. See? It just, it's just going to keep saying that. So, anyway. So, we're just going to set an orbit. I'm going to use its RCS to deorbit. Hopefully. The amount of propellant I put in the pod was meant to enable it to deorbit itself just in case. We do need a little bit of propellant to actually orient ourselves and everything. Does this pod have descent mode? I think I, I want to reserve a bit of the methane and oxygen, so I think I'll just go for 90 here, even though I normally go for 70. Okay, we are coming down. Since all these ports, all these ports currently are one RCS port. So yes, oh scrap killing the RCS ports here would be difficult. That would not be good for us. We may need to think about countermeasures. Okay, periapsis is suborbital, so 90 isn't too bad. We can deal with 90. Now, will it explode is the question. We're not losing a blater yet. But, but, we, we do have overheating on the pod itself, which is not a good thing. We'll see how that goes. But then, this is only supposed to be a lower orbit pod, so... The full lengths is supposed to be more than a lower orbit pod. I think the problem is the heat shield doesn't cover it properly. But at least it's not the heat shield that's blowing up this time. But still, this is disturbing. Oh, look, the RCS failed. Okay, well, it looks like we need to check out the pod's heat shielding this time. I guess the heat shield isn't protect uh, protecting it fully. I'll just increase the spacecraft's heat tolerance. Right now, I think it's reverted to the RO default. Okay, well, this was just a test. So, I'll have to edit that for the crew vessel pack. Okay, once again cheating. Cute little plume. Off that goes. Okay, well we had a short circuit. Which means we have no electric charge. Okay, that's another thing we need to worry about. Um, we need to have backup electric charge. We need backup batteries. You know, j just, just for the heck of it, we'll just... Um, well, since we're cheating anyway, we'll just do infinite electricity. The ablator isn't ablating, though. 
Maybe I should reduce the heat tolerance of the heat shield? I mean, it's so complicated. Maybe. I feel, I mean, the blader should have blade. Okay, it seems like it's surviving. I should have tried, uh, I should add the... Uh, the um, CUM offset, the descent mode. Technically, I had put descent mode on these. The problem is they changed the descent mode too to uh, adjustable CUM instead of just a CUM offset. But uh, that's fine. Uh, that was done a long time ago. Yeah, I'm just gonna copy the CST100 heat shield for this one. It seems a little bit OP. Oh, did we lose the RCS? We lost the RCS. Oops. When did that happen? Oh, scrap. Oh, great. Hopefully it'll orient properly. It's not... It's not... Please? Oh, oh. Please, go back. You're not dead yet. Uh oh, it's leaning though. Oh, but I was gonna test uh, descent mode as well, huh? This might be a bad time for that. But shucks. Since I have no RCS control. Well, it's sort of balanced. I'll risk 3x time warp. Come on, a blader, a blade. Um, what? What did it just do? Heat shield has suffered a char to blade elite. You don't say. Well, fine. But it's not a blading right now. I tried copying the CST100 configuration, which is the same as one of the RO heat shield configurations. But still, I can't get this thing to a blade at all. It's the set mode is sort of working, but we have no RCS because of O scrap, so it's not working the way we'd like it to. Well, I think that's all I can do. I don't know why it's not ablating. Okay, I, I don't need to go to the parachutes. All right, let's go back to career mode and do the thing. Okay, so to recap, what's going on in career? We've got one probe going over to Mars. But it's not going to arrive before this is done. The test of our new pod. So, we're going to do the test of our new pod and hope that the results in career mode are consistent with the results in sandbox. Can we get the pod back? Because it's really, really expensive and I really want it to come back. So we get the value back for it. Uh, maybe we should put the backup batteries and stuff. Let me edit this. I, I'm sure we put the backup batteries on the service module, but we need to put them on the pod instead. They're here. Ah, uh, let's just have extra backup batteries. <laughs> I don't know. With uh, O-Scrap, you can't have enough backup batteries. Each one of these little batteries would give us about half an hour worth of power. I know mines don't allow for methane. Oh no, maybe they do. Okay. Okay. I don't know what are mines <laughs> uh, allow for methane. Um, let's see. Have we got that unlocked? I guess so. We'll have to pay a little bit of extra there. Okay. Mephalox RCS is a go. We want this on the pod. It's just a backup set. I don't know if the spacecraft shell cross feeds. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know that. Okay, well, that's gonna be a mystery. I guess we'll find out. Okay, it's daylight. It doesn't matter what time we launch. 
It does matter if we have Kerbals. Let's not have Kerbals. Um, it's wobbling. Did I? I put Launch Clams. That, that's our rocket that is going to send Kerbals into orbit for the first time, folks. Well, throttle up. SAS is on. We have seven engines to ignite. They are brand new engines, no data collected. 3% chance of ignition failure. Here we go. All seven have lit. Performance loss on one, though. But okay. Why are my MegJet windows not up? Okay, well, we are past max Q. I went a little bit steep here. Well, despite the performance loss on one of them... And I can't tell which one... Everything seems fine. I was gonna turn some off to limit G-forces. So we have turned some off for G-forces. Well, now hang on to your butts. We've got one engine to rely on for the next stage. Okay. Ignition. Ignition failure! Ah, oh, it happened. Okay, we're going to do a suborbital test and retrieve this. Great. Well, we can make it as not suborbital as we can. Okay, let's try and get rid of the pod. I mean, the service module, not the pod. The pod we want to keep. It's really, really expensive and we want it back still. Okay, yeah, these don't get fuel. I'll have to attach it to the pod itself instead of to the shell. And then tweak it out, maybe. Okay. Coming in. Okay, quiet service module. You make me nervous. Suborbital is always going to have high g-forces, that's just how it is. I don't know if it's a good idea to use descent mode on a suborbital thing like this anyway. Okay, separating off the air cap. It's okay, both parachutes are still there. <laughs> air cap. Always a problem. Now, if I recover this the KCT way and try to reuse it that way, I think it'll cut down on the build time. So I don't want to just take the value of it. I think I want to recover it to cut down on the build time. Well, we're going to find out if it saves any build time. Remember, this is RP0 style, not RP1 style, so... The RP1 way... Oops. The RP1 way might not... be the way it goes here. This is the old way, where reusability might have been a little bit easier. Okay. Uh, recover. Recover. Ah. Uh, Recover. Oh. Oh, uh, well, it's saying 109 recovered, but that didn't get added to our funds, so it's not actually... See, otherwise, if, it, if this value was actually added to our funds, we get 607, but that's not the case. Okay. Um... Can we get this refitted properly in time? Why was all the oxygen used?
I, I, I can trust the parachutes, right? These didn't work the way they were supposed to, but if I attach them not to the air shell, let me just take off the air shell, but directly to this, maybe they will. Okay. But we need the rocker rocket plus the service module too. Um, let me just save edits for now. I need to sub-assembly the rocker rocket. The rocket doesn't take nearly as long, but that's realistic. Now the fact that our our second stage failed might be cause for concern. Maybe we should have two engines there, just in case. Well, now it takes 200 days. Still, the Mars mission gets in in 192 days, so if we rush build this just a little bit, we can take care of it before the Mars mission gets there. Now, do we want two of these up here? It's already got a 1.1 thrust weight ratio. Maybe we should have a different engine. Something with half the thrust, but we have two of them. Hydrolox. <laughs> Hydrolox, maybe. We probably need more than just two of these. Efficiency wise. The methane and the kerosene one are too different, actually. And I think I cheated on the models, too. What was the, this one doing before? 4,942 in 4 minutes. 66 tons. This is more, but it's heavier. Okay. Weird situation where we have a methane first stage and a kerosene upper stage because we we can't risk having just one of these engines. Well, one engine on the second stage. Hydrolox. I'm deliberately avoiding Hydrolox for some reason. <laughs> but probably, it, it's obvious that it should be Hydrolox, but I'm avoiding it. Don't ask me how to get the other tanks except for the gridded tank, by the way. We've got HP, gridded, and gridded, and that's it. Again, we aren't sending Kerbals up yet, but we haven't even picked up the contract for that. Clearly, it is prudent to test this rocket. Well, we should be doing some science, but... We are doing practical science rather than R&D-style science. We are not putting Kerbals. So no, in RP2000 there is a reuse benefit to recovering the pod and reusing it. In terms of time. In terms of time spent, it's a good thing. This is already on. Okay, it's got some lingering effects from the previous launch. It's got this set up the same as before. Okay, throttle up. SAS is on. That's going all over the place. Ignition. Um, we've got a short circuit on a battery, but those are redundant. And we've got thrust loss on one of the SE2060s, but... Well, we had that last time too. I don't know which one it is. Uh, we're, the, for comms, we're switching between connecting direct and connecting through a satellite. I don't know why it's even trying to connect through a satellite, but that's what's happening. All right, time to switch off some engines. I don't know which one's under thrust, so... But we leave four on, so it should be okay. Okay, separation and ignition. We have three... I need to fix these plugs. SE2020 plumes to be fixed. Fixed. What's the maximum thrust weight ratio with this stage? Five. 
Maybe we should shut one down close to the end. Okay, well, thrust weight ratio is getting up there. I'm going to test what happens when I shut down one engine. Well, it doesn't seem to be using much control authority, so that's good. So we can do that. I'm even going to test what happens when we get to one engine. Yes, it's fine with just one engine. Thrust weight ratio wise, it wouldn't be fine if we had one engine right at the start of the stage, but after a little while, it'll be fine. Okay, we'll let this deorbit. Okay. Separation. And ignition of this stage. Service module. Actually, let's coast. Our app is getting a little bit high. Oh, but we're going down. Hmm. Okay. Um, change that. <laughs> we, we need to not be going down right now. Big old radio burn, but that's fine. This thing has a thousand meters per second in it. Okay, well, that's good enough for now as far as orbits are concerned. 303 by 197. I think around Omelek is where we should deorbit. We, we really want to get as m close to the KSC as possible, though. But yeah, Omelek. Well, we lost that battery. Okay. Ignition. Okay. We are suborbital again. We didn't really spend a whole, whole orbit, but this is good enough for a test. Oh, those are already firing up there. Said they should do that. Huh. Oh, because they were activated on the previous mission and we recovered it, they're still active. I guess that's okay. In this case, it was not a problem. Nice to see they're firing, though. Okay, separating the service module. So, is like, descent, descent mode is not active. We should try to see if it works. Okay, activating descent mode. Okay, we see some pitch being used, so the airflow exists. I'll take it off of pitch control here. That doesn't always work, though. Smart ASS is very persistent about actually controlling pitch. I can't even knock it off. Come on, just stop controlling pitch. No, there's no way to convince it, sometimes. Wow, our service module ended up closer than I thought. It's 4.5 kilometers, we can't possibly hear it from here. Oh well. Well, we're passing over Florida. I'm not slowing down that much. So we gotta overshoot quite a bit. And still trying to control pitch. Finally, we get some flame effects. Let's see if our little descent mode actually diminishes the g-forces. I'll just manually control the RCS for the roll. Well, uh, looking good so far. Still don't know about the ablator situation. Well, I think we got through the re-entry heating. And again, I, I must apologize for the lack of ablation. I don't know why that happens. I copied the configuration from the CST-100 Starliner, and that one does ablate, so... Okay, so G-Force is 4.3 Gs. 
is what it endured, which is great. So descent mode works, and I'll have to upload a update to the crew vessel pack with the fixes, the pod heat fix and the addition of descent mode. Okay, aero cap deployment. It went off nicely this time. Okay, pre-deployment of parachutes and soon full deployment. 5.5 meters per second. We're a little bit far out, but I guess, you know, there's the US Virgin Islands or something. <laughs> Could send a ship out. Okay, well, I want to recover it again. We're gonna reuse this capsule. Hear me? Yes. We got a science. Okay, so it is being recovered. And so we are going to outfit it again to carry Kerbals next time. Hopefully I don't mess that up. But... Next time I am going to do the arrival of our Mars mission, so we'll be starting off with that, and then we'll see about what we do after that. So with that, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.